Well, can you name the iconic band that littered the Indio sand dunes with old guitars? Or do you know which genre of music came out of Palm Desert? The Coachella Valley has a rich musical history that extends far beyond the acts seen at Coachella or Stagecoach. Steve Sumrall explains in this edition of Our Desert Past. This is Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees beating up a Coke machine under the Coachella Valley sky in a scene from the 1968 movie, Head. It's one of the earlier instances of musicians caught on film interacting with our desert. It wouldn't be the last. In 1984, Tears for Fears topped the charts with Everybody Wants to Rule the World. The video for that single introduced the Coachella Valley to MTV viewers as well as music lovers worldwide. I know pain is as natural as the rain. Years later, the addition of the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival would inspire musicians such as Vampire Weekend, Nicki Minaj, and Beyonce to shoot music videos out here. But it was one specific video shoot from an iconic band during the early 80s that caught the attention of some motorcycle riders. And we came out here one day to go riding on these Avenue 38, which is known as the miniature glamis for their sand dunes. And we saw a big camera crew out here, big trucks. And they were filming a video of the, for the band Fleetwood Mac holding me. And we got to meet all the stars and everybody. And it was kind of neat. And it will always be something to remember. They were pretty fascinated with us because we're out in the middle of the desert. Of course, meeting Stevie Nicks, Mick Fleetwood was very interesting and I wish we would have had smartphones back then. But it wasn't just some fond memories that Fleetwood Mac left behind. There were some interesting souvenirs. A lot of people found guitars. I heard people come out here, collected them, tried to get the autographs and all kinds of stuff. They kind of came out here, filmed this thing, drove off and kind of abandoned it. Many music fans who are not even familiar with the city of Sky Valley do know this sign, thanks to the efforts of the desert band Caius. It replaced a similar sign that was featured on the cover of the band's album, Welcome to Sky Valley. And if you look at the back of the sign, you could find a collection of stickers from the bands which they have inspired, as well as the handwritten signatures of fans. And if you happen to feel like leaving your own mark, there's a Sharpie attached to the sign. In 2019, the popularity of the structure made it a target for vandals who attempted to steal the sign. Their efforts were in vain, and within hours, in a joint effort between some Australian Caius fans and locals, the sign was repaired. Five days later, this photo was taken. I've got a in my head. It was the band Caius that helped to popularize outdoor generator parties. Events that are finally remembered by fans such as Lenny Plaz. These little homemade uh, desert music festivals that went on out here. And you would that was your Friday night, you would go out and be thousands and thousands of kids out in the middle of the desert with all these desert bands playing. So it was very interesting. So during the early 90s, Caius, as well as some other desert bands, ushered in the Palm Desert scene, or desert rock. It was a genre that inspired Blender magazine to list Palm Desert as one of the top seven rock and roll cities in America. Even though Caius disbanded in 1995, band members would go on to either form or play in such notable bands as Queens of the Stone Age and Eagles of Death Metal. It was just very magical. A lot of guys created things out here that was very interested. And uh, a lot of outsiders looked in from New York and LA and Europe and got pretty fascinated of uh, what went on out here. For our desert past, Steve Sumrall, NBC Palm Springs, News First.